Hi there. Today's video is about the simplified figure and how I take it and embellish it. So I'm using collage and a very limited palette of primary colors and a bonus color. If we haven't met before, I'm Pat from Scribner Art and Design on Vancouver Island. I love sharing my knowledge and helping others along their way in their creative journey. I am very open to answering your questions and love to read your comments, so please do leave one below. If you are interested in more guidance than you can get from my YouTube videos, I do have a online Zoom workshop coming up on October 28th that I will share with you step by step my process and help you along the way to develop your figures. I'll leave the link below in the description. So today's video is how I do that second part of the figures after I have pulled down the bright colors, I start to change the shapes and embellish the figures and bring out their characters. So I hope that you glean something from this video demonstration and that you'll give this a try yourself. Okay, let's get started. I'm refining the painting around the head and the shoulder area a bit using the technique of negative painting. So I have the ribbons of color that I did to establish the basic shapes of the women. And from this, we can change the shapes, modify them, add legs, arms, purses, hats, whatever you choose. If you, if you didn't watch part one of the video, I'll put the link in the cards above. There you will see how I created the first part of this painting using a scraper technique and primary colors. Here I'm taking this right over to the edge and now I'm using a little children's play foam roller to add that bit of um, quickly patterned area to my painting. Here I have a stencil. This is a purchase stencil. It's six by six, the size of a jelly plate. And I am going to just use a foam um, makeup sponge to apply my paint through some areas of the stencil. I'm using an additional color here. So you can mix a lighter color or you could just use a new color out of the bottle. So I have chosen teal. It's a fluid paint. And when I use a stencil, I don't like to put it through the whole entire stencil. So it's a little bit random. And some of this will be left and some will be covered up. But right now we're just building some pattern and interest in the painting. I'm using a stamp here. This is a repurposed piece of styrofoam from a deli tray. You can use any kind of stamp that you have. Now I added a couple of round shapes again with something that was upcycled. This is a little piece of foam from my fluorescent lights from the ends that protects them when they're in the package. So that works fine as a little circular stamp. You can use the end of a pen for a smaller one, a cork. Now I'm going to come in and start carving out my shapes and lines for the dresses. I want different lengths of dresses here and different shapes. So I'm going to widen this gal out and I'm going to start putting in some leg shapes. Trying to figure out what's behind and what's forward. 
can be a little bit of a challenge at first as we start changing the shapes. Making her having much longer legs and now going back down. So you want to make variety in the hemlines so that you have some up and downs. It makes it more interesting. Making this one shorter. Using chalk is an easy way to correct your mistakes. So just white chalkboard chalk works excellent. And of course, if this doesn't work out, it can all be changed. So I'm making this one a little longer. So we have some up and downs in the overall composition. The next step is to paint out the negative space and leave the positive shapes behind. Now it doesn't mean that they're going to stay this color, but by having a little bit of the same color as the dress, it's going to hook them together and make it more unified than if we painted the legs in. So this is how I like to do it, is paint the negative space. And you can see the, the legs starting to emerge here. And don't worry if you paint over a leg, it can happen quite easy. We can always paint a leg back in. Continuing on across the whole canvas here, bringing out the legs. So you start to see the composition emerging much more now. This is a grayed down color uh, using my turquoise and adding a little bit of the opposite, which would be orange. So made with the yellow and red. Going back in here, just changing the shapes and adding more color. Widening out this dress that puts the other dark shape in behind more. So you really do want to watch for a couple of things and that is making your shapes appear different. So we don't want them all the same. That makes for a more boring painting. We want different heights normally, unless you're doing a really corrated chorus line. So different heights, different lengths of hemlines, longer legs, shorter legs. Variety is one of the great ways of making an interesting painting. So make sure you have variety in your shapes and it's important to have a change in size of your shapes as well so that you have some that are small, some that are medium, some that are large. That can also make a more interesting painting as well. We also want contrast with our colors and values so that we have some dark and some light and some mid-tones. You can check out your values by looking, taking a photo and looking at it in black and white. So just changing the shape of this one, determining that she's standing in front of the yellow dress behind. Now this yellow color is very strong and dominant for being in the background. And uh, I am going to change that even though it was my initial layer, that's okay. You can certainly decide to change the color, but I am still going to work with my primary palette and mix a new color that is going to go with this painting. So keeping a limited palette keeps your painting very harmonious 
as you continue working on it. So here I have mixed my red and yellow to make more of an orange shade. And it's transparent enough that I'm still seeing some of the underlying patterns show through. But now it's not as demanding. Here I've lightened the color up. And if you end up with something you don't like, let it dry, paint over it again. Sometimes my dresses change color many times before I feel that they're the right shade. I'm going to scrape a few marks in this with this catalyst blade and I've got a little bit on the blade. I'm going to use that excess paint somewhere else. This is the uh, repetition that is nice to have in your painting. So now just taking this orange off onto the side for that gal that's almost out of the painting. Putting a little bit of that same color down in the legs. And now starting to bring some of that color into the head shape. So make sure that you keep your heads oval opposed to really round. And you can change your necklines as well to give them a little bit more of a neck. So you could bring a, a lower V neck down on your dress, um, just changing things up a bit. When I paint in the legs, I try to leave some of the bits of the undercolor showing. I find that to be really interesting instead of totally covering it up. I'm okay with those little hints of yellow, but I didn't want the really strong dominant yellow in my painting. So I'm finding this dress maybe a little too wishy-washy. I'm changing the color in some places, but leaving that pattern to be a part of the overall painting. Just putting a, something on the side here, like a leg out of the painting. Going back into the background, just revising some of the shapes here of the heads. So don't worry about drawing your shapes necessarily perfect because this is how you can easily change them. Just adding another layer of paint in your background, modifying the shapes, changing the shoulders, adding necks, also, don't worry about your color being the same every time. I hear a lot of students get quite worried about not being able to mix the same color. I actually prefer not to mix the same color because this gives it more depth and variety when we don't have an identical color. We can see bits and pieces of the previous color peeking through, so this can create more richness in our painting. Carving into the neck area here, just to give it a little bit more shape. I'm using a one inch flat brush to do this. I find the flat works very well if you hold it on your edge to get a finer line. And I use a Crayola kids brush a lot for this. I find that they're very good for the price point and uh, they come in an assorted package. I'll put the link in the description for you. They're very reasonable, great for uh, people starting out, but also they are fine for a professional as well because they're pretty sturdy and I don't 
get upset if I forget to clean it. Now you see me coming in and adding more of a skin tone into the legs. I've mixed this color with my red and yellow and some titanium white. I've switched to a smaller flat brush here and deciding to put some stripes on this gal's legs, on her tights. So I'm just using white right now. So with the dark um, leg behind and the white, I've got a high level of contrast, which that is great if that's what you want your focal point to be. Here I am looking at some text out of an old dictionary, thinking about adding some arms. Doing cutouts gives you a great opportunity to test out where you want things. So you can test it out, you can decide to glue it on as collage, or you could then paint it in once you come up with your ideas. The other way that you can do it, of course, is use an app. And I often use the smaller version of um, an, app, an app like Procreate. I use a smaller version called YouDoodle. And it's very fast and easy to do some ideas and corrections on your work. So here I'm gluing on some collage paper, as in that text from the old dictionary onto the legs in this one. Again, we're looking at giving the painting variety and interest. I'm using a fluid medium to add this. It can be matte or gloss. And then I'm using a catalyst wedge to secure it down. You want to make sure that it's well glued. You want to get the wrinkles out and you also want to make sure it's coated on top so that the paper isn't absorbing a lot of paint. You'll also want to go back and paint over the hemline so it looks more connected, not so pasted on. deciding on which gal to put the arm and if she's going to have a bag or not or she's just standing forward you know waiting to get on the bus or whatever these gals are doing It's sometimes nice to do uh, arms opposite and do them pointing into your painting rather than pointing out. I find that kind of keeps people uh, looking in your painting. They act as a line, so that can be interesting. But however you want to put on some arms, it can add another feature onto your painting. Fingers work well too, although I'm having a little bit of a challenge with this piece. Now I did put in some hair using red and I'm sorry I didn't capture that on camera. Often I put in a bright color for the hair that relates to the painting and then go back in with another color and that leaves a little bit of the red showing through and it hooks the painting together. It's kind of a similar technique as starting with a full red backdrop in a painting. So now I'm adding a couple of purses. So 
So I've repeated the text in a few places on this painting. There's repetition with the pattern. I try to get a good balance of color while I'm doing it. Now I'm going back into the hair and you can see that little bit of red peeking through which is going to help it relate to the rest of the painting. So I'm going to do some of the hair in a dark color. So this is pure black, but you could make your own juicy black by mixing your colors, or you could add a little bit of your darkest color in with your black paint as well. Here I've mixed uh, a color that's a little bit more sienna-like. Give some red hair. It's okay to leave your hair as in the brightest color as well if that works in your painting. Doing something a little lighter on some of them. Again, giving variety, but also looking at balance as you do this. So when you change one thing, it can upset the balance. So you have to really watch for that. Now I'm toning in the legs glazing over them so i've added some yellow on top of the text and i'm using a baby wipe to just wipe some of the excess off and i'm doing the same thing on the purse at this point i'm trying to preserve some of the text showing through If you are interested in learning my step-by-step -step method to painting these figures that I call the Soul Sisters, I have a Zoom workshop coming up on October 28th. There is still a couple of spaces available. It runs on Zoom from 10 till 3 Pacific time. Taking a workshop is often a great way to get a little bit more help and push you past that place where you feel stuck and also gives you guidance from an instructor and a way to usually come up with a stronger painting. Here you see me glazing over the tights there and making the stripes more um, toning in with the dress so they don't stand out so much taking the contrast down going back in painting the text hat and just blotting it off with a baby wipe So I'm at the stage now where I'm starting to really refine things, uh, looking at everything to see what I need to do to make the difference. So I'm putting some shading in on the legs now. That's going to add a little bit of dimension to them. Putting a little bit of lighter color on the one side here again bringing out the dimension a bit so you can keep going over things until you really feel like they are correct making changes of shapes and colors 
So here I've decided to lighten up the hair on this one. Now I'm starting to go over this arm just to bring it forward a bit. Um, I still like having a little bit of yellow under to connect it, but I did change my mind on the yellow arm. So I'm putting some skin tone in there. Putting a bit of hand shape down over the purse. Coming down onto her legs. So I tend to use the paint that's on my brush in other places as well. Now, I didn't capture it, but I changed the color of the purses as well. Because I put uh, the turquoise over top of the yellow, it turned quite green. I'm not sure I'm going to stay with that because it's like introducing a new color here. Just cleaning up some edges with some negative paint. Deciding to change the purse color, make something bright and high contrast. Adding some more color to this dress to make it a little bit more vibrant. So when I get to this point, I like to basically start to really slow down and decide what other things I might want to add or change. So I've got a small brush here to add in a strap on the purse. You could do this with an acrylic paint pen as well. So adding a little bit of teal in places just to bring that color around in my painting. I find this works well with fluid paint. It flows nice. I don't want to outline every shape, but I'm just adding little hints of color here and there so that that purse shape isn't kind of on its own. So this is a little detail that I like to do. I hope that you've enjoyed these figures evolve and that you will consider giving it a try yourself. They're a lot of fun to do. Just adding a few details with a Posca acrylic paint pen. Thanks for watching and please do leave a comment or a question. I am always happy to help answer questions you may have and consider signing up for my upcoming workshop, Step by Step, How to Paint the Soul Sisters. Thank you.